Greetings and welcome to Tech Top X. My name is Alan Chu and I'm an SRE based out of Durham, North Carolina. Today I'll be talking about the SAYADOM and the simple cloning procedure we use if we ever need to replace it. If you've recently upgraded to the newest version of the Nutanix cluster check or NCC, you may have recently seen a new alert saying that your SAYADOMs have a PE cycles of above 4500. Please refer to Nutanix Field Advisory 38 for more information on this. All flash memory have a limited life cycle of how many times its cells can be overwritten. This is known as the programmable erase cycle. Now your current model of SAYADOM may only have around 3000 PE cycles. Fortunately, beginning of April of 2016, we have qualified and started shipping out a new model of SAYADOM that can support around 20,000 PE cycles. Now all new nodes shipped from the factory starting May of 2016 will already have these new SAYADOMs installed. If your current SAYADOM is getting worn and you wish to replace them with a new model with much higher write durability, please contact Nutanix support and we'll help dispatch and assist you in replacing these SAYADOMs. When you replace the SAYADOM, you can either one, reinstall the hypervisor and basically configure everything from scratch again, or two, simply clone the old SAYADOM and put it back onto the new one. The latter approach saves you a lot more time and administrative overhead of basically adding a new node back into the cluster. To avoid any downtime, we'll need to replace the SAYADOMs in a rolling fashion, one by one. Depending on how worn your SAYADOM is, it may take anywhere between three to five hours for this process to finish. So let's get started. First, we'll need to download the CentOS ISO and the PV file from the knowledge base. The link will be in the description below. After the download is done, we'll SCP the PV file into one of the CVMs. So we'll need to copy the PV file to one of the storage disks, particularly the SAS drives that has plenty of space. It doesn't matter which hard drive we'll use as we'll keep a note of the serial number of the disk. In this example, I'll do SDB1. So I just moved the PV file into a folder called clone underscore image, which will then mount in the CentOS lab environment. After the CentOS ISO image is done downloading, we'll then go into Prism. And let's take a look at the data resiliency. Once you've confirmed that the data resiliency is okay, and we're able to tolerate one failure, we can go ahead and put the CVM that we'll clone to into maintenance mode. I'll first start off with node A. This is the, the first node in the cluster. In order to put the CVM into maintenance mode, we have to first log in to a different CVM in order to find the ID So the ID for the first node is 4. So the command to set a node into maintenance mode is ncli host edit ID equals the ID number and then enable maintenance mode equals true. You can see here that under mains mode is now equals to true. And if you take a look onto the onto that CVM, you can see that the services are slowly going down. OK, 
keep a note of the serial number of the drive that we copied PV to, as that will be the drive that we'll be mounting. Now that the majority of services have been stopped, we can now safely power down the CVM. Once the CVM has it shut down, we can log into the IPMI of that node and power down the host. Now let's mount that CentOS image into the IPMI console. Now I'm going to click plugin to actually mount the ISO. Once the ISO has it mounted, we can now power on the node and boot into the ISO. So once the CentOS ISO has fully booted, you can log in with the credentials root, and there's no password. First, let's verify that the SayDOM is present by running the command ls scuzzy. As you can see here, the SayDOM 3ME model is mounted on slash dev slash SDA. Let's keep a note of that. Next, let's find the hard drive that we copied PV to by running this command to look at the serial numbers for all the disks on this node. You can see here that the drive that we copy PV to is mounted as slash dev slash SDE. Next, let's make a folder in the temp drive and mount that drive. Then let's go into the clone underscore image folder that we created earlier and change the permissions for that PV file. Once we make sure PV is executable, we can then start the DD cloning image.
So we'll be using DD to create a clone of the Seiram. The command is DD input file equals slash dev slash STA. The block size is 1024K. And then we'll pipe it into PV with the size of the Seiram specified. And then we'll pipe it into an image called node1.image and also the MD5 to create an MD5 checksum of the image. So I just started the cloning process of the Seiram. This process might take a while and it'll depend on how worn the Seiram is. Now that the clone has finished, we can verify the integrity of the image by looking at the MD5 sum. So the command will be MD5 sum and then point it to the location of the image that we just made node1.image. Once we calculate the MD5 sum of the image that we just created, let's compare it to the hash that we got earlier. Now that we've confirmed that the MD5 sum matches, we can now safely unmount and power down the node. Once you confirm that the host is currently powered off in the IPMI webpage, we can now swap out the Seidom with the new model. After the Seidom has been physically swapped out with the new model, we can now power on the node and boot back into the image. Once we boot it into the CentOS image, let's log back in as root. Next, we'll then make the same folder in the temp directory and mount the same drive as DE. Next, let's browse into that directory, clone underscore image and start the clone back onto the new Citadel. The command to put the image back onto the new Citadel is dd input file equals the location of your node1.image, block size is the same as 1024k, pipe that into pv, and pipe it into dd output file equals slash dev slash sta. Once again, this process will take a while, depending on the write speed of the new Seidadam. Once the image has been completed writing to the new Seidadam, we can check the MD5 sum of the Seidadam now. We can get the MD5 sum of the Seidadam by using the DD. The command to check the MD5 sum will be DD input file equals slash dev slash sta, block size equals 1024k, and pipe that into md5 sum. Once you confirm that the md5 sum matches the original image, we can unmount the hard drive and ISO and boot back into Hyper-V. When the node powered back on, remember to unplug the ISO to mount it. The node should boot back into Hyper-V and the CVM should start up automatically. Let's verify that the clock all matches in the cluster by using the command all SSH date. Next, let's confirm that the CPU of the CVM is running at the same frequency as the host. We can confirm of the CPU frequency by looking at the slash proc slash CPU file and grepping for the model and CPU. Once we verify that the CPU frequency matches, we can remove the CVM from maintenance mode. 
The command to take the CVM out of maintenance mode is ncli host edit id equals 4. Enable maintenance mode equals false. We can now take a look at the genesis status on that CVM and watch that the services come back up. Once we verify that the services are back up and running, we can take a look at Prism. We can go ahead and resolve the alerts regarding the CVM going down. That's it. Once this node is finished and the cluster is back up in a healthy state, we can replace the rest of the SADOMs one by one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and check out our other Tech Topics videos.